Hello and welcome to Star Wars The Living Set. Will, good to see you again. Good to see you. Excited to be back again for four new cards from Star Wars The Living Set. Once again, if this is your first time checking out our show, uh, we spend time talking about our favorite galaxy, which is the Star Wars Galaxy. Definitely. And then we, of course, love the Star Wars Living Set, where they put out two new cards every single week on Tops.com. New characters, new stuff to talk about, new backgrounds. That's really what we're here for, right? Yeah. All right, let's jump into our four new cards. This week we are at card number 133. Jan Dadana is, I'm gonna, I, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, he was actually from A New Hope. He's the older guy who kind of helps plan the battle on Yavin 4. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the only time he was ever in any of the movies. Um, he was actually a, a former Scottish actor that was in a whole bunch of movies. Um, but it, very interesting because he kind of appeared as this old wise man in the first movie, A New Hope. Now, again, not first movie sequentially, but first movie we saw. Yeah. Very interesting. So we'll spend a couple minutes on him. So let's do some stats real quick. They made 1,209. 39 PS have been graded by PSA, 8 9s, and 31 10s. Now, the character herself is actually from a, a planet called Kaminor. I hope I'm saying that correct. Uh, and he actually allegedly served in the, uh, in the Navy for the Alliance during the Clone War. And then he was a general in the Rebellion. And he's apparently the one who's credited with the battle plan on Yavin 4 to defeat the first Death Star. If you remember, he's like leaning over the table, that big round, like mm -hmm. lit up table thing. He's that guy. Yeah. We'll, we'll put a picture of him up here for you. And then he allegedly died uh, while protecting the rebels on a planet called Makota. Very sad. Very sad. Shout out to, uh, I suppose, General Dadana yep. at that time. Uh, again, we only see him for one for one uh, movie. Not a lot of backstory on him, but uh, anything else on, on that card for us today? Not much, except for I, I recognize the name Dodonna. Okay. I, I don't remember what it's from. I feel like it's either Rebels or Clone Wars. Oh. I'll have to look back, but I feel like there's something about... General Dodonna's fleet, or something like yeah. that. Yeah, he would have. He would have been in Clone Wars for that. I, yeah, I, 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 re I definitely recognize the name. Okay. If any of you guys know, leave it in the comments because I'm always positive it's from something. Okay. But I don't remember what. All right, we'll have okay. to check that one out. Very cool. I'll have to go back and look. All right, card number one thirty four, Zuckus from Empire Strikes Back. Well, tell us about Zuckus. So Zuckus is another one of the bounty hunter dudes. We've talked about a few of them. We've talked about. Uh, Bosk and yep. Boba as well. Yep. Now we're on to Zuckus. Yep. We're going to some stats quick. They made 1,227. 37 have been graded by PSA. 7 9s and 29 10s. The actress is Kathy Monroe. Um, and then she is she is actually uncredited yep. with 13 different items. So basically she was in 13 different things, but they never say her name in the credits. Yeah, so apparently she's the person that wore this really heavy suit. Uh, and apparently when they were filming this, between takes, they would actually have to have her like sit down because the suit was so heavy. It's interesting though, because I think the only time we see, again, in the final cut of the movie, they probably filmed a lot of other stuff. Yeah. The only time we really see them is when like all the bounty hunters are standing there on the Star Destroyer. And then, you know, I think I think one of the um, commanders says, we don't need this bounty hunter scum. We'll find them on our own, right? That's the only time we really see them on screen. Yeah. But I'm guessing they filmed a lot of other stuff too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then more about the character. Apparently, Zuckus is a Force-sensitive bounty hunter yep. who worked with uh, four LOM or four LOM, whichever you prefer. Whichever you prefer. Yeah. Um, uh, he is seen in Empire Strike. Yeah, he's seen in Empire Strikes Back. Yep. With all the other bounty hunters, like I said, he's one of the ones that are all lined up. Yeah, I think what Bosk is there. Bosk. IG, Boba. whichever IG was there. I think it's Bosk, Boba, IG88, Zuckus. Four LOM, yeah, and maybe one or two more. Yeah, maybe, maybe. yeah, something okay. like that. Um, his homeworld is Gand. I think is so. Gand. Yeah, Gand? I believe so. Yeah, something like that. Whichever one you want. Um, and apparently he was like tested by the Inquisitors, but like they didn't because he is supposedly a force sensitive creature. Yeah. But they said that he that they couldn't sense any force powers in him or anything. Yeah, who knows? I don't know if Inquisitors were reviewed for, or like interviewed for this, but that's a, that's the backstory apparently. So. That's the backstory. Yeah. Um, and apparently the mask was uh, crafted by Stuart Freedom. Yep. Freedom? I think it's Friedman, but close Friedman? enough. Okay. Yep. Um, and this is funny. The is. eyes were just covered with bubble wrap. So it was like this whole entire, like, really, like, probably very fancy, really expensive suit. Maybe not as expensive. Probably but... not fancy. It was Empire Strikes Back. They didn't have a lot of money even well, yeah. then. You know, they were just kind of making stuff out of whatever was laying around the shop, I think. Yeah. But, but still, this very big, detailed suit. Yep. And then the eyes were just bubble wrap. Like just they, bubble wrap. They were just bubble wrap. Kind of funny. I thought that was funny. All right, anything else on Zuckus? Not much, I don't think. All right, let's go to card 135. Uh, probably our most, f one of our most famous actors for sure of this week. Well, second. So yeah, second, first. that's fair enough. This, that one's just a voice, but this is an actual actor. Yeah. Uh, we've got Beaumont Kin from Rise of the Skywalker. 
the actor is Dominic Monaghan. Now, before we reveal what that means, we're going to go into some stats real quick. Uh, they made 1,184. 50 have been graded by PSA, 7 9s, and 43 10s. So you're saying, Dominic Monaghan, okay, who's that? For those of you who have maybe potentially traveled to Middle Earth, he mm-hmm. actually plays Mary Brandybuck in Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. which I did not see that at all until I started looking at the research on this one. And you just realized that when I told you a minute ago. But mm-hmm. uh, definitely, uh, his, that's his kind of his famous, most famous character for sure is definitely. Mary from Lord of the Rings. Uh, the character is actually the, from the whole world, home world of Lorat. He apparently served in the Resistance Army on the, during the Battle of Kashyyyk, where he apparently became friends with Chewie, which is nice. Get to mm-hmm. hang out with Chewie. Yeah. Uh, and then he also supported during the Battle of Exegol. Um, this character actually was first appeared in the 2019 comic Ghosts of Kashyyyk. Uh, I don't recall him having a huge part in the movie. I think he's kind of one of the people who's, again, just kind of hanging around. Yeah. He probably is in the background. I'm sure he's maybe got some face time. He might even have a couple lines. I, I think he does. He says something about Exegol, like something, okay. when they're talking about that. So my favorite part about this one is that it's Mary Brandybuck. I like I that. Now I, like now I want to go back and watch it and like yep. tell it and like how like the differences and like the similarities, like face shape, the voice, everything like that. Yeah, he's definitely crossing uh, crossing the world. So for those of you who want to play uh, the the old Macon Bacon game, where you have to try to connect movies back to Kevin Bacon, this character Dominic Monaghan will connect the Star Wars universe and the Lord of the Rings universe. That could be very very powerful for playing that game. Yeah. Cool. All right. Last card for you, card number one thirty six, Pre Vizsla. From Clone Wars. Tell us about Pre. So, Pre Vizsla, uh, we're going to stats quick because there's some decent stuff about this character. Okay. Stats are, they made 1,001, no, 1,317, uh, 55, is that right? Mm-hmm. 55 have been graded by PSA, uh, 16 nines and 39 tens. Okay. The voice, before I say the name, that I believe this is our second time that we had the same actor. It is. And pretty close Won't succession. be the last time either, I don't think. Definitely not the last time, no. but I think this is our first and also very close succession. Between and we also talked about him during our last episode. His, where, uh, remember, he was actually the person that wrote the character for Moff Gideon. Mm-hmm. Remember? Okay. So the voice is, of course, John Favreau, who also played uh, Rio Durant. Yeah, so if you go a couple episodes back... We actually uh, reviewed the Rio card, and we spent a lot of time talking about John Favreau and his background. So we're not going to spend a ton of time here, uh, even though, of course, great actor. Now he's producing, doing all the great stuff for the Star Wars universe. If you want to learn more about John, go back and watch that Rio video. Uh, mm-hmm. But definitely some great stuff about him. But tell us more about Pre Vizsla, though. So Pre Vizsla is basically the leader of Death Watch, or basically like the like quote unquote bad people Got that it. are trying to take down Satine. During the Clone Wars, and how many how many episodes was he in in Clone Wars? Five, uh, six, maybe. He 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 had he played a a kind of big role for some parts, a okay. really low role for other parts. Got it. Basically, he's the leader of Death Watch. Okay. Death Watch's goal was basically to dethrone Satine Got and it. have Mandalorians become like more warlike how they once used to be, sure. instead of all like graceful and like peaceful in the super cool, awesome dome city. He wanted to basically destroy that and bring it back to like. Or, uh, we are enemies, stuff like that. Got it. Um, and then the I believe, if I remember incorrectly, yeah, he uh, then teams up with Darth Maul. Okay. To then try and take down. Oh yeah, Satine. that's right. Yeah. But then Darth Maul's like, "Heh, screw you." Then he fights him, duels him, takes the dark saber, and I believe kills him. Okay. So Pre Vizsla, pretty important name because he is um, the a descendant of um, I forget what's his name, Vizsla. No idea. So, something Vizsla. Pre Pre Vizsla, because it'd be Pre Vizsla's dad. Then, pre Pre Vizsla. And then also Pre Vizsla, his descendant is Paz Vizsla. Okay. So a little bit of backstory there. A lot of Vizsla family tree history right there. A lot. All right. Uh, and then apparently John Favreau, who did the voice, uh, met Filoni at Skywalker Ranch while he was working on Iron Man. Yeah. So apparently they uh, kind of started chatting. John talked about how he wanted to love to do a voice. They hadn't found a person to do the voice yet for Pre Vizsla, and that's how John Favreau got the role. Yeah. So what it sounds like is if you're interested in doing something in Star Wars, you got to hang out at the Skywalker Ranch and talk to Dave Filoni. Yep. I haven't had a chance to do that yet. No. All right, good. Anything else on, on Pre Vizsla? I don't think so. Okay, what is your, again, every week, favorite card of the week? Which one is your favorite one out of these four for this week? <sighs> I got mine picked already. Who's yours? Uh, Beaumont Kin, because I like the artwork. I like the design on it. I think that just the, the, it looks great, and it's also it's Mary. Mary. Yeah. You got to go with that one. I agree. With you. All right, we're gonna go with that one this week. Uh, so again, Beaumont Kin, our favorite card of this week. Again, shout out to Chris Penix for doing all the artwork on these um, this, these amazing cards. 
Uh, he's still got about another almost 100 cards until he gets joined by another artist. Uh, but again, thank you, Chris, for doing this. If you're interested in the cards, there's two new cards available every single Tuesday, tops.com. And again, thanks so much for watching our show.